Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing how to create a volume slider. I've created a class here named Volume and when we test the movie, the music should start playing. Uh, we've got a volume slider here that as we drag the little ball up on the slider, the volume increases. If we want to decrease the volume, we just drag it to the opposite side and the volume starts to decrease. Okay, first things first, go to the desktop, create a new folder to host your files. I've got a folder here named Volume Control. Double click inside, you'll see I've already placed an MP3 inside the folder. Now go back into Flash, and what we're going to start off doing is create a new Flash file to run our code. Flash file, Action Script 3.0, and then in the Properties panel, this little class section right here, type out Volume. And before you save it, go ahead and press Control N to create a new file, and hit Action Script File. We're going to be creating our class in this file. Now, before you do anything else, load your browser, or you're already in your browser because you're watching YouTube, and in my description section, you can see that I've already included a link to uh, a Google document uh, for the actual Action Script. I want you to go ahead and press Control A to select all of that text, copy it, go back into Flash, and paste it into the um, action script panel, or in this case, uh, the yeah, the only visible panel when you create a new action script file. Now it, you can see it's removed all the indentations and everything like that. So to make it pretty, go ahead and select all of it and hit Control Shift F, and that should auto format all of the text. And if if you don't have if you don't want to use the keyboard key, you can click this button right here, and that'll auto format it for you. Okay, so now that you've set up the flash file and the action script, go ahead and save both of them. Uh, we haven't saved this one yet, so press Alt F A to save the file as, and it has to be the same name as the class, so we're going to type in volume, hit save, make sure you're in that volume control folder you created on the desktop, save that one, and then this one we're going to go ahead and save as blank. Um, well, that's a different folder. Go back into the volume control folder you've set up, and then type underscore blank and we've used this to plug in the class and we've used the exact name volume uh, to uh, to do that so now let's kind of dive into uh, the logic of this volume slider you'll see my first set of import statements uh, we import the sprite class graphics mouse event and then the event class we import the sprites because we need something to draw graphics to in this case it's um, the the components of the uh, volume slider the rectangle and the circle uh, we use the graphics class to draw those objects into the sprite and then we're going to be using mouse events throughout the tutorial as well as um, an enter frame event we're going to be using mouse events because it, it requires that the user clicks on the ball to drag it uh, that would obviously in, uh, require use of the mouse and then an enter frame event something that executes per frame. My second set of import statements right here, import flash.net.url request, basically that's going to allow us to load the song into a, a sound object, so we import the, the sound class, flash.media.sound, sound channel, and sound transform. Uh, sound channel is used to um, play, it allows the user to actually hear the sound that's playing, and then sound transform is used to manipulate the volume. Last but not least, we've got import flash dot geom, short for geometry, dot rectangle, which uh, draws out a set of boundaries, uh, four different points on the stage that the uh, ball, and in this case the circle that we've been using, that we're going to be using as a uh, volume slider, is contained within. Now, if any of this sounds confusing to you, I definitely recommend checking out my first three videos. They explain um, in great detail how to uh, use the sound class to benefit uh, or increase the user experience. Um, but let's let's continue going into the code. Uh, we're going to create a class named Volume. Um, it's already typed out for you if you followed the steps uh, mentioned earlier in the video. It extends Sprite because we're going to be using a lot of Sprite's basic properties to uh, 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 modify the position of the shapes we've drawn to the stage. Uh, we're going to create a variable for our sound object. We're going to create a new sound object, create a new sound channel, create a new request uh, equal to the mp3 file. We're going to pass the mp3 file. We're going to create a boundary of the rectangle data type. We're going to create a sprite to, uh, to hold our shapes, a slider, which is another sprite uh, to, to hold our ball shape, an x position, uh, which is going to be a number basically set to uh, 
the stage's width divided by two, so half of the stage width, and then a y position. Uh, and this, these, both, both of these values are going to be used for centering those sprites onto the stage, um, and that is stage dot stage height divided by two. Last but not least, a variable named vol, v o l, and it's of the number data type, and it is going to be used. Um, uh, for setting the volume and once our request is loaded into the sound object and plays through our channel the volume is going to be initially set at 50% and passed as a transformation to our channel sound transform property and that's pretty much just a fancy way of saying change the volume and in their constructor function we're basically going to fire um, fire off a couple of statements that uh, reset that volume so let's go into that a little bit more First of all, we've got our uh, constructor right here, public function volume. Uh, we're going to load the request, in this case it's our mp3 file, into the sound object and then we're going to set the channel equal to the playing of that sound. Uh, volume is going to be set to 50% from the get-go. Uh, now if you remember, when I test the movie, uh, well, if when I test the movie, the volume slider is actually set in the middle. That corresponds directly with the volume being set at 50%. Now, volume when you increase it, it can only, the way I've got it specified here, it will only be able to go to 1 and then decimal values all the way back down to 0, in which case 0 would be mute. After that, we set channel.soundtransform, the sound transform pro property of our channel object, equal to a new sound transform object with volume passed in the parentheses. Then we fire off that init function. So let's dive a little bit more into this init function and basically what it does is it draws the shapes to the stage, creates and draws a rectangle and a 